What is up guys and welcome back to another video and this is yet again another hot takes I haven't done this in about three weeks So it's been a while, but it is back and today we have a good episode starting off with the first hot take And that comes from the user Elias 99 XX and he says that Edge and John Cena need one more WWE title run and I completely agree I don't care that they're old. I don't care that they're probably going to be part-timers. I don't mind John Cena definitely deserves Deserves to be a 17 time champion and edge on the other hand he needs to have one last world title reign before he does eventually retire for the second time this time for good so i want to see it happen especially with john cena i don't care if he's going to hollywood if anything that is going to be good for the wwe if he can do four or five matches a year while also taking that belt everywhere around the world that is a win for the wwe the next hot take comes from Kashan Keeney, and he says having a small roster is actually a good way to build storylines and future stars. The only mistake WWE ever made was hiring much more talent than what they needed. Yes, I will agree to this to a degree. Let me explain myself, Kishan. So basically, I think right now the roster is perfect if there wasn't a brand split. But the fact that Raw and SmackDown are a thing and they're separate entities, I don't think you have enough talent for both shows right now. I just feel like it's way too thin, especially on the SmackDown side. There's not a lot of main event players. So I think that WWE should have kept on to like Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman, Alistair Black, Buddy Murphy, Keith Lee, and Karrion Cross. But some of the other people that they did really at least it's 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 okay like i understand why they did it i understand that those people are better off in other companies but like i said the brand split makes everything a lot more complicated than just having a small roster anyways gabe says not really a hot take but robert rude needs to turn heel on dolph ziggler giving them a small mid card feud for a bit making dolph a baby face then we need to see dolph ziggler eventually win the u.s title also winning over the crowd in the process I like the idea of Rude and Ziggler ending things because honestly, that group needs to go, but I'm not a fan of having Dolph Ziggler win the US Championship. I don't think he needs any more titles. I would give that to other wrestlers, young wrestlers, people who never held the title, or yeah, honestly, Dolph, I don't want to see him as a champion again. Like, I'm over Dolph Ziggler. He was cool. He did all he could in WWE, and at this point, he's just dragging it out. Timothy says that Sheamus should get an IC title reign. He's always put on great matches, and I disagree, and I'll tell you why. Because Sheamus should not be getting the IC title. No, in fact, he should be getting the World Championship. He deserves a WWE or Universal Championship run. I don't think he deserves the IC title. He's better than that. Right now, he's in the prime of his career doing the best work. He deserves the top title. Austin says, I will continue to say this until Plana reads this, Mark Henry was one of the most underrated heel champions of all time. Yes, we've had this before, and I'm just answering this because, you know, I don't want you commenting this every single time, Austin, but yes, we understand that Mark Henry was underrated, which at this point, it's not even underrated because a lot of people are accepting and acknowledging that he was really good. So yes, the Hall of Pain was great stuff. Mark Henry was awesome. Was he the most underrated? I don't think so. I think there are others that probably deserved more shine or deserved more from the audience. I think that Jinder Mahal was kind of more underrated than Mark Henry. K.O. Arujo says that the way WWE treats its employees is more discouraging than the bad book in itself. And yeah, if you're working for the WWE and you see this, you really don't even want to work for the company because you might get fired, you'll have bad booking, you'll lose a lot of matches, you'll end up in catering, and what's the point? So yes, I agree with this. It is very disappointing and it sucks to see it go down as a fan, especially if you are a wrestler who wants to work for the WWE or if you're working right now for them, it really does suck a lot. Khalid says that in my eyes, Raw is trying again. All their shows since the draft were pretty watchable, and if the show was two hours long, it would be the best overall show of the WWE. And yeah, I agree. If anything, it would be the best overall show of any promotion. Raw is really good. It's just a little dragged on because, you know, the third hour. If it was two hours long, it would probably be the best show right now. Maybe SmackDown has been slacking. Dreadhead says that Austin Theory is going to be a star. All he has to do is drop the Tyler Breeze gimmick. And no, I don't think he should drop the Tyler Breeze gimmick. Yes, we know he's going to be a star, but he should not drop the gimmick. It's kind of working. It's super obnoxious, and I don't like it, but that's the point of the gimmick. And it's kind of different from what Tyler Breeze was doing. Tyler Breeze was more of a pretty boy. This man is just super cocky taking selfies to mock his opponents. It's kind of different. Man Like Tav says that Bianca, Rhea, 
Tony, Liv, and all these other new girls are the future of the women's division. They'll never be a new four horsewomen, but in a way, they are the new the ruthless aggression era of women's wrestling. Yes, I will agree with you, man like Tav. Yeah, it's true. This, These women are great. There are a lot of talented women in this women's division, and once the four horsewomen kind of retire or get to the point where they're kind of done, I see a lot of these women stepping up and taking that opportunity, and this is by far the best women's division of all time of ever like right now period and of all time ever like these women are so talented and gifted in that ring amv says that storylines are more important than the actual match after all the ww do pride themselves on being an entertainment company and not a wrestling company and yeah another i'm agreeing with a lot of these hot takes because you guys are spitting facts right now amv this is true i prefer these storylines a lot more than wrestling and that's the only way a wrestling company is going to survive in nowadays like a lot of people want to see storylines they don't necessarily want to see wrestling it's just a fact you got to get invested and then the wrestling also needs to have a story of its own so it's not just putting on a five-star match it's putting on a match that tells a story that goes along with the story you were telling the entire time and that's why w WWE so great. Bright Studio says that the WWE should treat the tag team titles with respect and legitimate titles like AEW does. And yes, another hot take I agree with. Bright Studios, you were spot on. I wish that they took it seriously like they do, like AEW. Barnaby says that Randy Orton can pretty much do anything and make it work. Man went from being one of the guys no one thought could ever turn babyface again to being one of the most over wrestlers on the roster in a year, and he's willing to do whatever the company asks of him, and yes, that is why I said Randy Orton is the most perfect wrestler, because he honestly really is. Trent Ryder says that Brock Lesnar being a world champion is actually a good thing because it gives a mystique feeling for the championship and makes it truly a spectacle that you only see him once in a while. And yes, another hot, like I'm literally agreeing with all these hot takes. I completely agree. That's why I liked Brock Lesnar as a champion because when he did show up, you're like, okay, now I gotta watch this pay-per-view or now I really gotta watch this episode of Raw. It makes a lot of sense and it does work. Buki says that I think we need to have the return of GMs. They provided some great content, even if it was a little played out. Yes, again, guys, I'm agreeing with this hot take. I miss GMs. Even though some of them were assholes, you could have one babyface GM and then one heel GM and do whatever you want. They don't necessarily have to revolve around the GMs, but I do miss them, and I liked it when some of them were power hungry and a lot of the wrestlers were fighting with them or like in their office arguing with them. It, it was cool. I miss it. Like Teddy Long and Eric Bischoff, that was beautiful. Come on. Come on, come on. John John TV says that in the mid to late 2000s, TNA was at their peak in my eyes. And yeah, I feel like 2007 was like the last good year where I enjoyed it. I think it died and started to go downhill ever since Hulk Hogan in 2008 joined or whenever he joined. I don't know, maybe 2010. I don't know. 2007 was like the last good year in my opinion. Izell says that SmackDown is still the best show even after the draft took place. No, I'm finally disagreeing with a hot take. I don't agree with you. I think SmackDown has been on the decline just because they don't really have a great roster. Like, they really don't, and it's kind of sad. Brandon's World says that WWE's product this year as a whole has been the best since 2016. And no, I think 2018 was a good year as well, so it's not really fair to say 2016 was the last good year. Because 2018 SmackDown was fire. Let's not forget about that roster with Samoa Joe, Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles. Oh my god, Shinsuke Nakamura. They were Daniel Bryan. It was it was a different level. Cameron TV says that Austin Theory should be the next legend killer in the WWE, and that's not a bad idea. The more I think about it, he really fits in that role, and he could be that guy. And if anything, it should start with him starting a feud with Randy Orton and beating Orton. That would really work. And the last hot take of the video comes from Happiness of Doom, and he says that all the really superstars should buy tickets to Raw and invade. Honestly, I just want to throw that in there because I thought it was hilarious. Like, just imagine Bray Wyatt and, and Aleister Black and all these other guys who were released, Keith Lee, Karrion Cross, just buying a ticket and you see them in the front row of the crowd. That would legitimately have me dying. Anyways, that is it for the video, guys. Thank you so much. I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know some of your hot takes in the comments below. And on the screen right now are some some other videos you should totally check out if you have some free time so go ahead and click one of them i will see you all in the next video